Uh, Pat, he's great. You've always spoken and mentioned that you have had star-based rosters and gone out for those kind of players. Obviously, uh, all your Showtime teams, Patrick in New York, you got here a month later, Alonzo arrived, mm -hmm. then Tim Hardaway, then Shaq. This is a different roster now for a couple of seasons than we've really seen you put together where no player has ever been an all-star, and it's a more ensemble approach. Right. Is this a concession to salary cap and luxury tax in the way of the NBA? Is this maybe coming up short in free agency? And, and, and what's this sort of starless world without the ultimate star you've surrounded your entourage with? Yeah. What's it like for you having this type of roster? Mm -hmm. uh, there were only, I think, 12 All-Stars uh, in the Eastern Conference last year, correct? Yeah, right. so there's only 12 All-Stars, you know, out of, uh, you know, so if there's 450 players, there's uh, 225 uh, in the Eastern Conference, but so there's only 12 of them. So we feel like we had players last year who had All-Star years. They just weren't selected. Uh, as far as having stars, we do have some stars on our team, but they're not considered that. Um, and the question about uh, a free agency, um, uh, I, I respected the fact that Kevin Durant actually gave us an audience uh, when we went up to uh, uh, up to South uh, up to the Hamptons to talk to him. Uh, I felt good about it, but I also felt we were a real long shot, you know, by that time. And so we didn't hit in free agency at that time. And so and the same thing happened with uh, you know with uh, with Gordon. Uh, and I think if we have the opportunity, we will always continue to pursue. A player of that ability, uh, you know, to come here. Uh, we made the decision to stay with this team, um, and even if we had signed uh, Gordon, we would have tried very hard to keep at least two of our players and surround him with talent. But it didn't happen. So, look at, we will move on. And I like this team. I'm happy that uh, James Johnson and Dion Waiters didn't didn't sign somewhere else, and they were still on the market when we could get back to them. And um, and we stepped up very quickly with with those players. So um, I think that's where we are. We're, we're ahead of a. I think we're way ahead of a rebuilding cycle, and I think we're one step away. I think we're one step away from being a very good team. Now, one step away could be the the collective effort of, a, of, of an ensemble cast of very gifted players, or one step away could be a move that could bring a player here. And so I do think we have the assets for that, but I also think we have the inner, inner strength as a team to, to take the step forward. Pat, when you go back to what the team did three or four years ago, with the statement after Trayvon and some other things that you know, LeBron, Dwayne, those guys, they use their, obviously they use their platforms more than a lot of superstars did in the past. How, how would you say that activism among athletes has changed since you first got into the league? I mean, the back, I mean, what Bill and Kareem had to go through and how, I mean, there it was, it's different then obviously than now, but you're seeing, we're seeing statements, but would you say that, what we're seeing today really counts as activism by athletes. The uh, the decisions uh, that players make, uh, athletes, people make uh, to uh, speak their conscience is their choice. And, you know, we live in a world where you have an opportunity to speak that, that conscience. And so uh, I do believe that some of the players in the NBA that have huge platforms have spoken very well on, on, on the subject that I know you're talking about, and, and, and they explain it in a way that I think is, uh, is accurate you know, for them and how they feel about it, and, and it gets to a lot of people. Uh, there are other people that do it in a way uh, that creates tremendous controversy, and uh, uh, but it's their choice and their conscience, and, and, and we give that to them. Our players uh, last year you know, came to me and to Eric and decided that they were going to, uh, in unity, uh, you know, lock arms. And, uh, and I'm cool with that. You know? But if one player wants to separate himself from the pack and stand out there, then that's his choice and that's his, his conscience, then, you know, he may have to deal with the consequences of the public. 
and of the media. It has nothing to do with what the organization is going to do. We support our players, and we talk about it, and they talk about it. So uh, uh, there's tremendous power on the part of the players uh, you know, in this league, especially the players that have 10, 15, 20, 30 million followers, <laughs> to, to make a statement in the right way. And I think those players have done it very well for the most part. Okay, you guys. I'll see you next week. I win. <laughs>